In this invited talk, I would like to overview 40 years of research on teleexistence, which I invented in 1980, and explain cutting-edge technologies of teleexistence. We will also discuss several problems to be solved to attain the teleexistence society and foresee the future that teleexistence will develop and create. Teleexistence is a concept that denotes an extension of human existence wherein a person exists wholly in a location other than his or her actual current location and can perform tasks freely there. The term also refers to the system of science and technology that enables realization of the concept. The location that differs from the location where you physically exist can be a real space or computer-generated virtual space, and the latter case, that is, the existence in a virtual space is usually called virtual reality. Furthermore, by matching the real space with the virtual space, it is possible to exist in the real space through the virtual space, or to act by adding information from the virtual space to the real space. The realization of teleexistence is done by virtually creating a state in which a person enters a robot or wears a robot like a suit. The left figure in this slide shows a system called a power suit an exoskeleton human amplifier, in which a human wears a robot-like suit to expand his abilities and enable work in dangerous environments without losing human abilities, such as judgment from a broad viewpoint or dexterous eye-hand coordination. However, there are several drawbacks to this system. The first is that it is extremely difficult to operate a system automatically, as the robot's own movements will cause the human body to move as well making it incompatible with AI-based automation. The second disadvantage is that the user suffers damage when the robot breaks down. And the third is that the robot cannot be used without going there. The existence acts as a virtual exoskeleton human amplifier and eliminates those shortcomings. The user is in the center of the right figure in this slide. He is connected to several autonomously intelligent robots. One of the robots, the left robot, is used for teleexistence. Even though the user is remote, he puts on the robot as if it were a suit and realizes the state of being inside it. In this way, the advantages of exoskeleton human amplifier are retained, but its disadvantages are compensated for. In other words, People can get a new robotic body and use its functions to extend their own body functions. He can then let the remaining autonomous intelligent robots, the one on the right, but there can be more than one, work autonomously without being moved himself. Conversely, the robot on the left can be put into autonomous mode and he teleexists to the robot on the right. Thus, it is possible to use multiple robots by sequentially teleexisting them. Furthermore, even if the robot breaks down, the user is not harmed, and of course there is no need to go to the site directly. Avatar robots are placed everywhere, in offices, stores, factories, hospitals, schools, libraries, museums, parks, stadiums, amusement parks, all over the world, and people can use these Avatar robots are their own alter egos from their homes, offices, or public teleexistence sites. This allows, for example, children and elderly people who have been hospitalized for a long time and cannot leave the house to play with other children or return to their own families' homes. In principle, these robots are intelligent robots. Therefore, when they are not in use, they can autonomously perform their assigned tasks. Equipped with safety intelligence, they can avoid dangers that the user has overlooked. Furthermore, even if the user logs out of the robot in the middle of the day, it can autonomously return to its original location. Foreign workers can also work remotely, thus eliminating the immigration problem. Furthermore, by utilizing the time difference, a 24-hour workforce can be secured from multiple overseas locations, eliminating the need for night shifts. Both men and women can participate in the workforce while raising children, making it easier to raise children. 
It is also noteworthy that as the teleexistence work progresses, more and more data will be collected on how people work with their own bodies. This data will allow us to see where people are looking and what kind of force they are applying to their hands as they work, which was not possible which, with mere video data. Currently, there is no big data that can be used as training data to teach the flexible and skillful work of humans to intelligent robots, and deep learning has not been achieved. However, with teleexistence, as workers from all over the world perform such tasks, the necessary data will be collected, and it will be possible to replace them with intelligent robots. I came up with the idea of teleexistence in September 1980. Since then, I have been working on the realization of teleexistence with my laboratory members more than 40 years. This slide shows how we developed teleexistence technology. I would like to show a video of teleexistence from 1980 to 2012. Teleexistence allows a person to experience a real-time sensation of being at a location other than their own to interact remotely with real or virtual environments. In 1980, the concept of teleexistence was first proposed by Professor Susumu Tachi. Its feasibility was demonstrated through the construction of alter ego robot systems. It was first published in Japanese in 1982 and subsequently in English in 1984. Telepresence and teleexistence are similar concepts that were proposed independently in the USA and Japan, respectively. However, they differ in the aspect that telepresence does not include existence in a virtual environment or existence in a real environment through virtual representation. In 1985, a method for mobile teleexistence was proposed and its feasibility was evaluated by developing a tele-vehicle system that can be driven remotely, providing both auditory and visual existence sensations. In 1989, a teleexistence surrogate anthropomorphic robot called Telisa, the first prototype of a teleexistence master-slave system for performing remote manipulation experiments, was designed and developed, and a preliminary teleexistence evaluation experiment was conducted. In 2000, teleexistence in a humanoid biped robot was achieved by developing a teleexistence cockpit under the Humanoid Robot Project, HRP. Furthermore, the advantages of human-like motion were proved. In 2005, a mutual teleexistence master-slave system called Telisa 2 was constructed for the Aichi World Exposition using retro-reflective projection technology, RPT. In addition to the conventional bi-directional verbal communication, simple gestures such as handshakes could be performed. In 2010, a mobile mutual teleexistence system called Telisa 4 was developed with master-slave manipulation capability. It was equipped with an immersive omnidirectional auto-stereoscopic 3D display called Twister with a 360-degree field of view. Using Telisa 4, local participants at the event were able to view the face and expressions of the remote participants in real time. In 2007, Telisa 3 was constructed, which can transfer visual information in a more natural and comfortable manner by accurately tracking the head motion of a person with six degrees of freedom. In 2011, Talisa 5 was developed with a conjunction of 53 degrees of freedom for performing full body movements. The transmission of haptic sensation allows the operator to feel vertical and shearing forces exerted on fingertips. The operator can freely and independently move the robot's head, upper body, arms and hands similar to his own while maintaining the head to arm vector intact. The operator can feel tactile and thermal sensations when touching objects remotely. We launched JST Axel Embodied Media project in 2014. In the project, we have developed a compact and integrated tactile sensation transmission module based on the principle of haptic primary cars. With Axel Embodied Media project, 
Teresa 6 was developed based on Teresa 5 system. Teresa 6 realized full embodiment with 67 degrees of freedom by adding legs and improving hand motor functions and expanded haptic information transmission by integrating haptic primary color modules. Since the size and degrees of freedom of the human and robot bodies are different, even if the angles of the each joint are identical, the robot will not be able to move as expected. What is important is to control the vector from the camera to the hand of the robot so that it matches the vector from the human eye to the hand. The same is true in controlling the fingers. Teresa 6 focuses on the vectors between the thumb and the other fingers, and devising and introducing a new control method to make them coincide in master and slave. A six-axis force sensor, an acceleration sensor, and temperature sensors are embedded in all ten fingers of the Avatar robot, Teresa 6, and by processing the acceleration sensor information, vibration information is obtained and sensed as haptic primary colors. Each human finger is displayed with a dihaptic module that presents vibration and temperature and a force display device. The force display device consists of a finger pad, a thread, a threader, and a small motor. The finger pad is pulled by the force of the motor and the force sensation is first gener generated by the skin sensation caused by the deformation of the skin on the belly of the finger. When the finger pad is pulled with a larger force, the force is applied to the finger joint and force sensation is generated by proprioception receptors such as the joint capsule. Since its conception in 1980, we have initiated many projects, accumulated technologies, and demonstrated the feasibility and effectiveness of teleexistence. And now, after 40 years, the times are rapidly catching up with us. In October 2016, the XPRIZE Foundation held its annual Visionaire Summit. The Foundation held its Visionaire Summit to choose the next XPRIZE theme from among nine candidates. Over a two-day period, nine teams presented their theme proposals, 
and the proposals were screened by a panel of around 300 mentors who included academics, CEOs, and venture capitalists. Team Avatar, one of the XPRIZE teams, asked me to come to the 2016 summit to demonstrate about Teresa 5, which they recognized to be the world's most advanced robot avatar. I agreed and presented the technologies over the two days with the help of the members of Tachi Laboratory. The panel was impressed with the demonstration and they picked Team Avatars as the proposal for the next XPRIZE theme. The ANA Avatar XPRIZE was then launched in March 2018 with the finals scheduled for 2022. In response to this movement, startup companies such as Teleexistence Inc. have been born, aiming at the industrialization of the Teleexistence Avatar. In addition, KDDI, Nippon Steel and Sumitomo Metal Solutions, NTT Docomo, and Toyota announced prototypes for teleexistence-oriented products with a sense of presence and workability. As can be seen in this series of events, the times are steadily moving toward the creation of a new industry field of virtual teleportation industry, or teleexistence avatar industry. In this context, social implementation is steadily beginning in industries such as convenience stores, which can be said to be the social infrastructure that supports society. A good example of this is the implementation of product display operations using teleexistence at the Lawson Tokyo Port City Takeshiba store, which opened on September 14, 2020. It is worthy of special mention that the robot was actually introduced and opened operated in the actual store. Gem through space with unique innovation born in Japan. How do you like a new body? A robot body? Wow, nice! Through teleexistence technology, you can go anywhere. Even if you are not there, it's like experiencing it firsthand. It's possible to be here and still do your work on a space station. I believe that with this teleexistence innovation, we can change society as well as how we live and work. So many young Japanese visionaries are determined to change the world. Passion driving technology for a better world. Find your Japan. Influenced by the Avatar X Prize, Japan's science and technology policies are beginning to take Avatar into account. The first of the six goals of the Moonshot R&D program, which was launched in fiscal year 2020 under the auspices of the Cabinet Office's 115 billion yen fund, is to realize a society in which people are free from the constraints of body, brain, space, and time. We will challenge to realize a cybernetic avatar society and a cybernetic avatar life. In other words, the goal is to realize a teleexistence society. Owing to the creation of new industries such as tourism, travel, shopping, and leisure, it will greatly improve convenience and motivation in the lives of citizens, and it is anticipated that the healthy and pleasant lifestyle will be realized in a clean and energy-conserving society. With a view to the future, it will be possible to respond instantaneously from a safe place during disasters and emergencies, and this technology can also be used routinely to dispatch medical services, caregivers, physicians, and experts to remote areas. Furthermore, based on my 30-year cycle prediction, it is expected that a major step-up will occur again in the 2050s and society will change drastically and full-fledged teleexistence society will be realized at that time, with teleexistence giving people new augmented bodies and instantaneously transporting them virtually. It will empower humans to live more like human beings, greatly contributing to humankind in the years to come. Thank you for your attention. 